How's it going today, guys? Um, last year, I think it was about uh, November, December or so, uh, I picked up the Big Mill Basic, and I've only done uh, one video of the Big Mill, the Big Mill Basic or the Big Mill. I'm not sure which exactly it is, but I'll put a link to the video right over here for the first video I did with my Big Mill. So one of the things about the Logosol system uh, that I'm having some trouble with, and it's pretty much with all chainsaw milling is the only way you can really mill is if you're down on the ground. And when I was carrying the chainsaw really low, um, it's just not fun. It's not fun on your back to be bent over and pushing that chainsaw. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason that I'm not such a big fan of a small saw uh, when you're milling because you just don't want to be bent over and pushing that saw all the time. So uh, one of the things I looked into is, is what's known as a, a log table. And um, what I did about a month ago is I built something called a log table, which you can see behind me. And uh, what that's going to do is hold the logs off the ground so when I mill them, I don't have to bend over uh, to pick them up and to move them. And it just makes life uh, incredibly more easy. So yesterday I got out, or two days ago I got out, and I just milled two logs. I had some um, red maple. I milled two red maple logs. Just, just to kind of get a feel for how things are going to work. And I got to say, I mean, I'll be honest, guys, after milling two logs on the log table at the right height, uh, all I really want is the, the farmer's M8 or the M8 sawmill. Uh, I'm starting to see how having that jig, having the, the arms to lift things up to the right height, uh, to adjust your blade height uh, quickly by, by turning those knobs, and also to um, to have something on the end of the saw with the carriage, they have something on the end of the saw to hold that blade more rigid. I mean, you can really be very producti productive with, with the farmer's M8 or the M8, uh, and, and it just makes, makes it easier and, and I would say more fun. Um, and I, I hate to say that's pretty much the thought that was going through my mind the entire time I was using this, this setup. But I do want to say that, you know, for the investment, if, if you're torn between going to the logs or, or bringing the logs home, you know, this, this big mill certainly does the job. And, and there's nothing wrong with the logs I cut compared to, compared, so I started out with the timber jig, uh, which was just a piece of wood that rode, you, you made a piece of wood with the timber jig. And that wasn't very precise, but it was cool. And then we did the big mill which you screw these supports into the end of the log, which was more precise, uh, a little bit more work to screw the ends of the supports in, or less work, but still work. And then with this system here, all I have to do is get the, the logs up on the table and then adjust the height of, of my rail to cut them. So we don't have to touch the log except when the chainsaw cuts it. Uh, and that's getting more, more uh, precise or quicker too. Uh, but I just, uh, I can't justify the, the farmer's M8 or the uh, M8 right now, but if you're looking to do some serious milling, uh, I think that's definitely the way to go. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. Um, but you can step up the way I've done, because it really is, you learn something uh, every time, and, and I'm pretty sure I've got some more to learn as far as tweaking what I've got going on behind me. The first thing I want to do is just show you some of the, the boards I milled yesterday. And these are, uh, they're much better than the ones I did. Uh, you know, these are by far the best I've done yet. And, um, you know, this is, this is what you're looking at. This is the end result. And, you know, yesterday when I milled, I actually ended up milling two logs in an afternoon, where usually when I'm milling, uh, I, spend, I spend a lot more time uh, you know, getting things done. So it's, it's definitely much more productive. Here's one of my, here's one of my cutoffs from the top of the log. And this is kind of cool. I, I set the thing to, uh, to cut a half inch. So there's a quarter inch kerf and actually the, the chain on my saw is more than quarter of an inch. So there's a quarter inch kerf and this is the minimum thickness you can cut with that mill and, and uh, I think that's you know that's pretty cool 
um, that you can be that precise. This is, you know, this is a piece of piece of maple. I don't want to break it, but it's you can see it's got quite a bit of flex to it there. So um, you know, this is this is what I've been getting, and I've still been getting, you know, when I'm cutting the boards, and I, I think there's some more tweaking. When I'm cutting my boards, I'm still noticing that. Uh, this one looks like it's fatter on this side than this side, and I just don't know what I can do about that because um, it seems like, you know, the, the blade is going to have some movement to it as it goes through the wood, and it also seems like, uh, you know, nothing's perfect. I mean, uh, you know, you just don't have as, as square of a setup. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see in time, but I, I still, for rough construction, I, I live in a, a timber-framed house. And I mean, I assure you that these boards are a heck of a lot more precise than what the guys used that built my house almost 200 years ago. But everything you're seeing here in front of you was probably maybe three hours worth of work. It, it wasn't that long. And it was definitely much more pleasant than, than bending over the whole time. If you take a look over here, this is how I ended up mounting the Big Mill Basic on top uh, to my boards. And what you end up doing is you remove, you remove the, um, the handles that attach to the log. And you basically put a couple pieces. There's a couple metal plates under here. So if I wanted to take this off, I could just take out two bolts on either side. And, um, you know, first you would take off the rail. Then you would take off these two bolts. And you could take the whole piece off and bring it inside. Now, the cool thing is, is because it's a Lagasol, um, mill, it's, it's all made out of aluminum, so it's not going to rust. So I've had this out for at least two months, um, just kind of hanging out there. But this is, uh, this is what things look like. And, and what I've been doing is when I get to the end of the log, uh, I've got my log dogs here I've been using. But when I get near the end of the log, I put these C-clamps in and I just try to wedge a piece of wood here to push against the log when it gets near the last cut to keep it in place. The way I built my stand here is I got some logs. This is Tulip. And I was originally going to put some posts into the ground and make a really solid structure. But um, I just didn't want to put the effort into it. So what I did is I got some Tulip logs and I just squared off two sides. And then I put some boards to, to put them all together. And then I took an eight foot level and I tried to cut my tops as close to level as I could. And then what I did is these are actually supports that you would use for, um, uh, for putting a 4x4 four four post on top of concrete. So I screwed these posts in, and then I put my 4x4s four on top of that and made them as level as I could. The Logosol directions say that you want your two supports on either side to be parallel. One problem I've been having with, with the mill is setting the height that I'm going to cut. There's very clear numbers on, on this, this part right here. And this rod has quarter inch increments that you just pull this little key out and you put it in different heights. The first log, I had a couple times where I noticed I got the height wrong and I thought it was, you know, just beginner error. But even the second log, I tried very hard to, to be careful with what I did. And I still found a couple times I had the height wrong on the second cut, the second uh, side. So what I think I'm going to do is, is I'm going to end up painting on the inches one color and on the half inches a different color, just so it's very easy to check and see quickly uh, how my height is doing. And then another issue I had yesterday was, you know, the only way to change these, these heights is you got to move the log out of the way. So if you slide your log completely over, and mount everything, and then you want to, you know, go down a couple inches to cut your next board. You have to slide the, the log over and then slide it back, and it's, um, you know, it's just a pain. It's still much quicker than it would be uh, with any of the other systems. But uh, I, again, I just I can see where the farmers M8 or the M8 would just be really a really nice sawmill to have. The way I designed things was I designed a four foot. I have a four foot beam in the front for putting the logs on. And then I have an 8-foot or 10-foot log table uh, to store my logs on. 
And what I tried to do is make it so that they don't touch each other because if I'm loading a log on, I, I do have access to machines. So if I'm loading a log on, I, I bump this too hard. I didn't want to knock this one off as well. Uh, so I've got plenty of room to, to store logs on this side here. And then I only bring them one at a time on this side over here. And then here's just a view looking up the mill. So the first four feet is separate where I just use that for one log at a time when I'm sawing. And then all back there is storage. And I had uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I had a total of six logs stored up there. And yet again, if, if, if the last four feet was a farmer's M8 or, uh, or a, a Logosol M8, um, think of all the wood storage up there. I could just be buzzing through wood uh, like nobody's business. I guess I was wrong because I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five logs left and I cut two yesterday. So I guess I had seven logs up here. And I've got a couple cedar logs I've been saving all summer. So these are going to become some fencing. I'm looking forward to that. And then this is some more red maple, which is, uh, that's about 17 and a half inches in diameter. My cedar is, uh, is about 13 in diameter. If you take a look from this view, you can see, um, there's my, my four by four for the closer log support. And then you can see just in the distance, you see the one in the back and it's pretty close to parallel. I can't call it perfect, but it's certainly pretty close to parallel there. And then here's some proof that I did some milling. Boy, it, it's just amazing how much sawdust you kick up when you're milling. So folks, that's pretty much it for today. I just thought you might enjoy seeing uh, what a log table looks like and the, the Logosol big mill on the log table. Maybe it'll give you some ideas. I do look forward to making some videos with the, uh, with the chainsaw mill and, uh, you know, show you guys a little bit more about what it's about. And I, I don't want to seem like I'm too down on uh, the big mill. I think with anything, it's, it's a process of learning the tips, you know, the techniques and, and the right way to do things. I'm two logs in. I've got a long way to go. But uh, I, just, I just will say that um, having the logs up high, <laughs> you can see the true potential of the farmers or the M8. Um, I just saw a couple of raindrops go by, so I think we're going to shut it down for today. It was a beautiful day, and I don't know what happened, but um, thanks for watching today, folks, and we'll see you soon. Take care.